Hello, today I'll be doing a review of the Unitron UT120A multimeter. I've been using it for a few months now, and so far I think I like it better than most of the other multimeters that I've used. The multimeter is very simple. It has a DC-AC voltage, resistance, diode, a continuity buzzer, and frequency measurement. You may have noticed that this multimeter doesn't have current measurement function. I chose that on purpose because on regular multimeters, in order to measure current, you have to switch the probes. But on fixed lead multimeters, you can easily switch it to current mode when you're meant to measure voltage. And if your probes are still connected to the device, you can easily damage it. I like the fact that you can operate this multimeter with one hand. So if your other hand is busy holding the probes, you can quickly switch this with just a thumb. First I'll cover the physical characteristics. As you can see it fits in the palm of my hand very easily. Uh, the probe's uh, length is good enough to measure most of what you need. It's about 50 centimeters or so from the multimeter to the tips of the probes. The multimeter comes with this carrying case which is pretty handy. It has the holes for the probes if you want to use it closed. As you can see it's fairly visible, whatever you want to measure. One downside of the case is that the probes are a bit of a pain you have to wrap them around these plastic legs. As you can see it can be a bit annoying. I have a breadboard here with uh, AC voltage, some DC voltage, and uh, LED, a few resistors, so we can do some measurements. Okay, so let's start with DC voltage. So you can see it uh, measures it pretty quickly, sets the range very quickly. Now for measure AC. You can see it's already uh, picking up some noise, so it'll be off by a few millivolts if you're measuring AC. It's measuring 13.33 volts. The power supply is actually rated as 9 volts, but I suspect it has a bit higher output. Let's try measuring resistance. I have two resistors in series here. It takes a few seconds, but measures 11.13 kilo ohm. Measure just the one. This is supposed to be 1.3k. This is supposed to be 10k. So it's within the 5% error range of these resistors. And finally, let's measure frequency. And the AC input should be 60 hertz, so it's almost right on. Let's check the continuity. Continuity is not latched, as you can see the scratchy, but it is reasonably fast. As I mentioned, it comes with a case and this screwdriver, so you can open it. Let's see what's inside. So we have a nice threaded insert for the screw and there's not much in terms of protection. I see a PTC here, a couple of uh, melt resistors and that's about it. There is no fuses so I definitely wouldn't recommend this for high voltage measurements but it is decent for small circuits. Has a nice cable strain relief. Let's take a look at the other side. We have the button pads and the contacts for the buzzer. And this is the ceramic buzzer itself. It is absolutely tiny. 
The rotor contacts are copper, so they'll uh, wear out eventually. They're not gold plated like on some of the higher end multimeters, but this is 20 bucks or less. As you can see, the cables are absolutely tiny. The probes are extremely thin, so they'll be picking up any kind of noise. Another downside of this multimeter, it will not measure LEDs. Although it has the diode uh, mode, it just can't, doesn't have enough voltage. It will measure regular diodes. It's reasonably quick at measuring the diodes. Let's go over some of the pros and cons of this multimeter. So for the pros, it's very compact. As you can see, it comes with a case. It's very easy to operate one hand. It is reasonably accurate, good enough for 90% of the work I did. It's fairly well built, metal thread for the screw, strain relief on the cables, and it's really cheap for $15 to $20. This is a very good multimeter. Now the downsides, resistance auto ranging is very slow, as you saw compared to some of the other auto ranging multimeters. Although I have to say, if I had a manual range multimeter, that would have been slower because you have to switch to the right range if you didn't get it the right the first time. It'll be much slower than even this auto ranging. The cables inside the probes are very thin, so they pick up a lot of EM noise. It is cumbersome putting away the cables after you're done, and there is hardly any protection. Although it says here that it's CAT2 600 volt rated, I wouldn't come near 200 volts, never mind 600 with this uh, multimeter. And the buzzer is pretty quiet. I mean, if you're working in a noisy environment, you definitely won't be able to hear it. And it's not latched. Also won't measure LEDs. On the diode function, it's only good for regular diodes. I forgot to mention, it has a relative mode, which is not bad. I personally like this multimeter because once again, it's very compact. I just throw it in my pocket if I need to measure something pretty quickly. I wouldn't recommend this for any professionals that require very high accuracy or if you're working in an environment that has a lot of EM noise and you need to measure AC voltage, this will not work for you because as you can see, I have nothing connected, nothing powered up and it's already picking up 50 millivolts. And if you bring it anywhere near higher voltage lines, then all of a sudden you're picking up up to hundreds of millivolts. Let me know in the comments if you want me to review any other pocket multimeters. I can probably get my hands on it if it's on Amazon or on AliExpress. Just might take a while.